Eighth grade. <clears throat> this is a quick video on the colonial men and women assignment. I didn't get uh, many of these. Some of you all did not turn this in. I just want to go back and quickly remind you of what we did in class to help you be successful on this assignment. Now, here's our success criteria, okay? In class, we did a critical read on men and women in the colonies, and we looked specifically at voting rights, how wealth was distributed, and the role of women in the colonies. And you were supposed to take that information and notes and reading and highlights, okay, to help you fill in your thinking map. As you can see here from the agenda, okay, we see the same success criteria. We did this in a critical read. Then we read closely um, and highlighted some of the phrases. And then we went straight to the colonial men and women chart so you all could fill it in. So I know most classes had an opportunity to at least start filling in uh, this assignment. If you notice on the document, okay, you're looking at voting rights. You're looking at the distribution of wealth. Distribution, I believe even in the critical read, we looked up distribution and uh, added it to our notes. So if you don't have anything in your notes for chapter four, 4.1, then you either weren't there or you didn't finish or complete it. Let's take a look at the textbook here. Chapter 4, 4.1, okay? And if you remember from the critical read, we went through and we highlighted some of this information. Voting, okay? Paragraph 2. Here's the paragraph on voting. And here you're supposed to describe, not copy and paste the entire paragraph and then put it into your chart. You know you lose points for that. No, instead, you're supposed to go through here and kind of put this in your own words, uh, bullet points would be helpful. That's how I know you got it, okay? When you just copy and paste this entire paragraph, I, I know that you just know how to copy and paste an entire paragraph. So for voting, we know that it was mostly rich land-owning men who could vote, okay? Some Catholics and Jews were not allowed to vote, and slaves and servants without property would definitely were banned from voting, okay? Those are the things that should appear under voting rights. Next, it talks about distribution of wealth. And I believe that, and I, and I believe, I know that we typed this in um, because I have it in my notes. And I know that we looked up the word distributed, which means to give out, to divide, Okay, to deliver to. So it's important that you look at this and we see two divisions. We see wealthy merchants and how they use wealth or what they use wealth on. We saw city dwellers who were not wealthy. If they were going to become wealthy, it would be through a job, it appears. Wages. Okay, they work for low wages, so they would be locked out of wealth. And then we also saw artisans here. Seamen and artisans had were an example of those city dwellers that had to work. And so you would include those two things. Okay, the wealthy people in the city had it. The low paying jobs in the city, uh, artisans and seamen did, did not have it. Okay, so I should see some examples and a quick description. Again, not a complete copy and paste of the paragraph. Next at the bottom here, women's rights. And we see three boxes down here, one, two, three. So we need to talk about three things here. One, talk about women in rural areas. What was their life like in the colonies? Women on plantations. What was their life like on colonies? Women in the cities, okay? What was their life like in the colonies? And you describe that. 
And please don't forget, because some people who turned this in already did, they did not mention that women had very few legal rights and they could not vote, okay, as an example, okay? Again, I don't want to see the entire paragraph just copy and pasted and thrown onto the page, and you all are expecting full credit for that. Don't do that. Okay, hopefully this video helps you.